The evolution of history following the Kabbalah would culminate in the advent of the first man who dares to recognize that he is God. In other words, Friedrich Nietzsche's Ubermensch, or Superman, or what some would interpret as the Antichrist, a role the Nazis believed was fulfilled by Hitler. The Nazis declared that they were dedicated to continuing the process of creating a unified German nation-state, begun by Otto von Bismarck, a member of the Super Right of Freemasonry founded by Albert Pike and Mazzini, known as the Palladian Right. The Third Reich, meaning Third Empire, alluded to the Nazis' perception that Nazi Germany was the successor of the early Holy Roman Empire, beginning with the crowning of Charlemagne in 800, and which was dissolved during the Napoleonic Wars in 1806, and the German Empire, which lasted from the unification of Germany in 1871 under Kaiser Wilhelm I until the abdication of his grandson in 1918 at the end of World War II. Although Bismarck had excluded Austria and the German Austrians from his creation of the Klein Deutschland state in 1871, integrating the German Austrians nevertheless remained a strong desire for many people of both Austria and Germany behind the pan German movement which influenced the racist fascism of Nazis. Nietzsche, who was foundational to the delusions of the Nazis, was frequently published in pan-German newspapers. In The Antichrist, written in 1888, Nietzsche declared, quote, Let us look each other in the face. We are Hyperboreans. We know well enough how remote our place is. And after quoting Pindar, he commented, quote, Beyond the north, beyond the ice, beyond death, our life, our happiness. In On the Genealogy of Morality, Nietzsche introduces one of his most controversial images, the quote, blonde beast, the Aryan race, which he compares to a beast of prey impelled by a good, which is an irresistible instinct for mastery over others. It was through his formulation of an idea related to the blonde beast, the Ubermensch, the Superman, that Nietzsche inspired the fascist ideal, even if it wasn't of his own intention, of the new man with an excessive emphasis on male virility. As well, Nietzsche's mental illness would come to be perceived as a model for the sentimental notion of, quote, divine madness, an idea linked by Plato to mystic prophecy and the adoration of male beauty. Ultimately, based on the homoerotic fascination with the male as the sole object of affection, Fascism is a perverse form of machismo, where notions of compassion are denigrated as, quote, feminine, and the purported virtues of dispassionate discipline and self-serving violence are celebrated as, quote, masculine. War is essential, Nietzsche declared, and beyond good and evil. He explains, quote, here one must think profoundly of the very basis and resist all sentimental weakness. Life itself is essentially appropriation, injury, conquest of the strange and weak, suppression, severity, obtrusion of peculiar forms, incorporation, and at the least, putting it mildest, exploitation. But why should one forever use precisely these words on which for ages a disparaging purpose has been stamped? Nietzsche calls for a conqueror and a master race which, organized for war, and with the force to organize unhesitatingly, lays its terrible claws upon a populace, perhaps tremendously superior in numbers, but still formless and wandering. In order to dispend one's resentment or resentment, one must become like a pillaging Viking or Homeric hero, an artist of expressive violence. Such is the Ubermensch.